Our next guest is a talented actress and New York Times bestselling author. Her latest book, Allie's Well That Ends Well, Tales of Desperation and a Little Inspiration, is available May 10th. Please welcome back to the show our friend Allie Wentworth, everybody. Nice to be you? here. I'm great. I'm actually I'm wearing my teenage daughter's prom shoes, and they're a little small. Really? So I'm so happy I got across the. Do you, uh, is that a situation where you have to ask permission to wear them? No, she's at Brown University right now, so she doesn't even know. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And I'm assuming you might even be paying for Brown University, so how dare she tell you what shoes you can't wear? That's right. Yeah. This is first semester right here. <laughs> yes. So, um, I, are you, I would imagine having a daughter in college, is it drawing a distinction between what college was like when you were there? Let me be very clear about what college was. Well, first of all, going to college was, I was in a beat up Honda. I brought my stinky pillow from home, yeah. a toothbrush, maybe some birth control, and a suitcase. Uh huh. And that was it. My, my parents didn't go with me. We didn't go to Bed Bath and Beyond and get a shower caddy uh -huh. and all this. Yeah. My, my daughters have Pinterest boards of what they want their dorm room to look like. I'm like, are you, it's like five by seven underground. You've got some, you know, escaped convict roommate. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Like we are spoiling our children. It should be uncomfortable and hard. And... Yeah. It's true. It's, yes. I will say, I'm pretty sure I was sent with a shower caddy. And then when my parents did visit, they, it was like still in its plastic wrapper. And they were like, have you Who not been? What it, they were like, caddy. how have you been caddying? <laughs> how have you been caddying yes. your shampoo? How do you carry your shampoo into the uh, yeah. shower? No, she, I have to get like Nike shower shoes. No, you don't. <laughs> There's no fungus that's going to take over your feet. Yeah. And kids could use a little fungus. Well, I think boys can. Boys can use boys a little can fungus. Use some fungus. Yeah. I mean, I can put my feet anywhere now, literally yes. anywhere. Oh, I see. Yes. And I'm totally, I'm fine. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm You're not fine. one of those guys, though, that is bare feet on an airplane that does this No, thing. absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I would her. never. No, you wouldn't. My feet are not meant to be seen. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. That's Mine little... aren't usually, but I didn't have any good shoes for this <laughs> outfit, so. Um, what, was, yes. uh, what inspired you uh, to write this book? It seems like maybe the, the pandemic was a tipping point to... It's not your first book. You've written others, but was I that... I have. It was. I got COVID very early on in March, back when the only photos of this global pandemic were people on a ventilator. Yes. So it was, it was, it was a little scary. It was a very scary. scary time. It was. And my husband, George Stephanopoulos... Um, <laughs> They he, should say they should say his name like that on the news, like when yes. they introduce yeah. him. This week with George Stephanopoulos. Oh, I'm gonna be divorced tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I got it early on. We actually took a picture that we put on GMA just to basically say, you know, I know we're all terrified. Allie's actually at home. Mm -hmm. So back then, when you quarantined, I quarantined for three weeks in a little room and it got kind of gross. But I could hear my daughters downstairs, and I thought to myself, how am I going to grow teenagers in a pandemic? Mm -hmm. You know, they're supposed to be out robbing liquor stores and getting knocked up. Yeah. And... <laughs> Instead, they're just in the house with me and George, yeah. and that's that is going to stunt that's not their growth. Living. That's yeah. not. <laughs> um, they're Stephanopoulos girls. So, I, I was thinking about the book, and I, I thought I'm going to write a book originally about how do we help our children through mm -hmm. this. That was sort of the impetus for it. And then what really got me to write the book was I had such a high fever for a few days. And I watched all, you know, 5,000 seasons of Mad Men, but like on a loop, like the next episode would just automatically yeah. start. So for about three days straight, I watched Mad Men and I was so delirious in my fever that I, this is real. I thought I was married to John Draper. Okay, yeah. 
and he was cheating on me. Uh -huh. So George would come and like all masked up and like put my tray in with some kind of weird broth he <laughs> cooked yeah. up. And I would scream at him like, I knew you were sleeping with that French secretary. Yeah, yeah. And George's reaction was like, oh, it's just crazy alley. Yeah, yeah. And it got worse and worse. And then at one point he came in uh, again with the mask and the gloves to bring me some sad peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And he was like, I, you know, I love you and I think you're getting better. Your oxygen levels are, you know, higher. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm taking my percentage of the Draper industry, da, 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 da. you know? And so that's what scared George the most. Not that I had COVID, but that I firmly believed yeah. that- Because he... everybody says loss of smell is bad, but I think thinking you're Betty Draper is worse. Oh yeah. As a symptom. It was. Yeah. The only good part about about that delirium dream was that I had huge knockers oh, and I was drinking a lot of martinis. All right. And there was a fun part of it, but it took me a while even today to realize that George is is not sleeping around. Or yeah. maybe he is. Maybe you know something I don't. Well, but... you did. You did like a lot of but you did have him at home during the pandemic. He was doing GMA yes. uh, from the house. Yes. I, you know, I think that maybe too much uh, has been put on the people who are doing the shows. It must have been a lot to live with people who are doing a show. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for thank you. Would I mean, you, yes, would you... he pays the mortgage, but it's also really hard for me. <laughs> um, so during COVID, uh, George Stephanopoulos was doing yeah. GMA. Yep from our dining room, uh -huh. which is it's just incredibly difficult because you have a wife upstairs screaming, I know you're cheating on me. Yeah, that's not great. And you have two teenage daughters that are also like, daddy stole my makeup because there's no makeup artist nope, in our right, dining right. room. And we have two very yappy dogs that if you even fart, they start barking like uh -huh. crazy. So he's, you know, has his boxers and then a coat, jacket and tie with like the ABC logo behind him. And he's got a handful of treats and any, you know, they go like breaking news, dun, dun, ABC breaking news. He was so afraid the dogs were gonna start barking that he just kept throwing treats during all of GMA. Uh -huh. So that man was a rock star. Yeah. I mean, the plates so he was like juggling. So after like a big news week, were your dogs super fat? Well, our dachshund is, morbidly obese. Yeah. And and by the way, I packed on some pounds during COVID. As by the way, a lot of a lot of data says that women we internalized and we ate and mm -hmm. got heavy and men like were like I'm going to go use this time to go bike a 5000 miles. So they all got in shape. I um, went to see my doctor after the two years of quarantine and eating a lot of fudgy the whale cakes, which is the cover of my book because that was our coping yeah. mechanism. And um, my doctor called me back at 10.30 at night and I said, hi, you know, Dr. Kurth. And she was like, Ali, your cholesterol is 336. And I was like, yes, what does that mean? <laughs> and she goes, like, you're, you're gonna die. So what have you been eating during quarantine? I said, well, I, like what everybody else has been eating, a baguette dipped in cheese and ice cream. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, no more, no yeah. more. I still am, but I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm taking a statin. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think everyone, based on what you said tonight, everyone will want to e read even more about uh, Allie's trip through a pandemic. Allie Wentworth, everybody, Allie's Well That Ends Well is available May 10th. We'll be right back with more Late Night. <laughs>